and welcome back to the channel. You'll be joining us here today at the Norge Live in the Laguerre JSP2, the Nissan, and we'll be breaking this circuit down into its three stages and trying to learn each stage and then eventually completing this stage to do the full lap. Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's, uh, it's been quite a while since my last video and during this video we're going to take a little look at the Norse life and trying to break this circuit down into the three stages that you can choose. Obviously you can do the full 12 mile section or nearly 13 miles worth uh, but you can break this down into manageable chunks to learn the circuit and we're going to do just that during this video. Now when this video first became an idea. It was part of a team event that I'm taking place in as in one of my uh, Facebook groups and to be fair there's been some fantastic challenges within this group and uh, this was a more of a team event where I was running in the LMP3 car and some of my um, co-teammates were running the LMP2. Well just out of curiosity I jumped into the LMP2 and just fell in love with this car really. It's got an amazing engine sound. There's none of the messing around as in LMP1 with the boost buttons, or you know, you just get in and push the accelerator and that's what you're getting. But it really is a fantastic car to drive. It's just absolutely flat out a beast of a car. And obviously the circuit Norse life is certainly one that you need to learn. So we'll take a little look at each stage uh, section one, two, and three, and I'll I'll add the video that I added uh, to try and help some of my teammates to sort of walk through each section at full speed, really, uh, and then I'll share my final video, my final car setup for the full circuit. I did change setups through one and two. They were very similar setups. There were really minor changes. Uh, set to three. I did change the gear ratios, but coming back to do the full circuit, the gear ratios really don't work between sections one and two. So let's have a look at sectors one, and then we'll um, progress through to sectors two and three, and then I'll run the final circuit, um, set in, I think it was a 549.3, which is currently the fastest time in this car. Uh, especially on PC, you don't have the luxury of seeing who set the fastest lap um, across consoles. Uh, if we come out and just take a little look on the leaderboard, you can see most of it's taken up by LMP1 cars. And I think you'd probably have to go quite a way through the lobby to start seeing LMP2 cars. But we'll have a look, we'll see if we can see any LMP2s. So I can't see anybody in there that set a faster time in an LMP2 car. But again, you can't really see those things on Xbox or PlayStation. You'd have to be looking at the uh, PC leaderboards to be able to see the LMP2 times. So let's leave that there, shall we? So just to show it's not all plain sailing, here's a few outtakes while I was trying to set the full lap. I think I'll show you the full lap just after this. Gives you an idea what we're aiming for. Then we'll have a look at the setup and then I'll split the track into the three stages and talk about each section as we go through the video.
So one last thing to run through the setup before we go. Obviously running the softer tyre and I will be producing another video recent, uh, shortly to do with tyres and being on the right tyre at the right time when it comes to hard and soft tyres. I have noticed just recently that there can be quite a difference between the grip levels that you get with the hard tyre compared to the soft tyre when they start to overheat a little bit. And I have managed to set some faster lap times using the harder tyre, uh, obviously depending on the conditions. So anyway, yeah, running slightly harder on the front and uh, as soft as the rear will go. Going to the brake pressure, obviously this is all very uh, personal, how much pressure you like to go through your pedals. Um, brake balance, the car was just turning a little bit too much when it was down at 55, so just lifted it to 57. And the brake ducts, obviously we've closed those out as much as we can do to aid aerodynamic efficiency. Um, it doesn't really come at any detriment. There's not many massive braking areas in this circuit, to be fair. Uh, the downforce at the rear and at the front is number two. Obviously, there's going to be more um, effect on the rear downforce, or less effect, should I say, compared to the front downforce. Obviously, you can only go six on the front and you can go to 20 at the rear. So number two on the rear is not playing that much of a part, but number two on the front is definitely helping the car to stick through some of them corners. And almost all the way to the front, the longitudinal weight bias, putting most of the weight to the front of the car just to help that turn in. Moving to the suspension, I don't think I've adjusted the caster at all. Uh, the wheel feels fairly light. Um, well, Obviously we've got the force feedback in effect as hard as you want that to feel but there's not too much I've added through the caster angle. Cambers on the front, not too much. Usually you'd expect these to be around 3 but running nice and smoothly through the corners at 2.3. And the ride height is as, almost as low as it's going to go but obviously going through some of those uh, carousels and some of the bumpy sections on this circuit it can play havoc with the suspension, so just lifting it a tiny bit. And the suspension at the front's as solid as it's going to get. And just a few tiny clicks at the rear, two clicks at the rear, uh, softening it out. And again, the camber on the rear is just to aid acceleration, uh, nowhere near as much as on the front. Um, if you struggle to get this corner round, car around the bends and you're finding that the rear end's too twitchy, you might want to increase some of that camber angle at the rear. Uh, you could go more towards uh, maybe 1.8, 2 maybe, but you will notice a decrease in acceleration by going further with your cambers. <clears throat> Obviously ride height at the rear is a lot higher than at the front, uh, just to give it that sort of rake angle and get the uh, aero at the back of the car working. Steering ratio, I'm running a 360 degree wheel um, on the lock to lock. Um, so the steering ratio is set to 8 degrees, just so that I don't have to be taking my hands off the wheel. Um, towing angles, it's quite responsive to be honest on the front, so not a massive tow, uh, negative tow on the front. And the anti-roll bars are set fairly, fairly low down to be honest. Um, I probably haven't adjusted them at all to be honest with this setup and the third spring I haven't adjusted either I don't think um, and these are as they are for specific reasons really I, I'd always run a softer rear anti-roll bar than the front um, and moving to the dampers again these are quite soft considering that the suspension is really hard the slow bump and the rebound are really quite soft you could i could probably put them all the way up here and probably see a better effect within the car to be honest so not something i've really spent a lot of time tuning the um, the dampers <clears throat> the radiator is closed as much as i could close it before any damage to the engine but i did run quite a quite a good session with it down at zero and I think I came across the line with it almost at 50% damage so really thought I needed to increase that to about 20%. Engine braking again we don't want to we don't want the car to turn too much through the braking phase of the corner so 
And just to eat this out a little bit to number five, I think it goes to number 10. And the gear ratios, very important. I did change these for set to three during the stages, but put them back to something that would feel better throughout the entire circuit, to be honest. Moving to the differential. <clears throat> Um, not too much power ramp at the rear or else the car tends to want to step out. You start lowering the power ramp and the car will start to overstay on corner exit. So slightly increase that to 70. Um, if you struggle again, if, if the car feels too twitchy at the rear, and you're accelerating out in corners and finding that the rear end is just spinning out, you could increase this to 80 or 90 even. Um, the clutch I think is best on 8 and the preload feels quite nice between uh, the ramp angles. It sits quite nicely. Uh, that's what the preload is for when you're coming off the throttle. And the car feels nice and balanced when you come, come off the pedal. And again, the coast ramp, just to stop the car from turning too much under braking, but allowing some sort of transition between, to get a little bit of um, turning response really, I've set at 35. And that's the tuning guys, uh, thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this video as always please hit that like and subscribe button, leave your comments as, all, as always I really do appreciate any comment that goes in the, in the uh, comments section, it's just nice to see that people are watching the videos and I'm helping people out uh, where best I can. So what's about to follow now is the whole circuit broken down into its three stages and I'll just talk through each stage as we travel through it. So we're about to take a little look at the Nissan P2 and how to drive the circuit really. Everything's been adjusted uh, for a specific reason. It might feel a little loose this car, but it certainly handles really well as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, down the start finish straight and we're going to be uh, moving up through the gears and maxing out as much as you can through each gear. And as we come into this braking zone, there's a board on the right hand side and that's where I'm going to start braking, taking a few shifts down and saving one more shift down uh, for the final section of the corner. Just dabbing the brake pedal a little bit to uh, apply some anti-lock braking. Quick shift down into first and then up into second and third. Just as you come across this line, just braking nice and hard. and Just uh, let the car straighten out before you harden the power again. As we come down through here, fourth gear is designed just to carry it through this apex and then up into fifth gear. And then we're going to take two little shifts down and then like a tiny shift down into third. Harden the power through there, keep it hard on the power, a tiny lift and then a drop down into second gear and back on the power. Maybe up to third or just carry it to second. Car goes nice and light and then back on the power again and then up into third gear. Now we're going to stay in fifth gear around this top section here. Uh, it's a much more powerful gear and uh, it saves uh, dropping the engine note. So all the way through here in fifth gear and then up into sixth gear which has been again just adjusted to get maximum speed down here hitting about 191 miles per hour as we come flat out through this section. We're just going to look for a little discoloration in the tarmac or we'll harden the brake two shift down then save a shift. Try and hook up more through there that ran a little bit too wide. There's a little bit more grip on the inside but don't touch any curbs. Coming into the final braking section, a really tough section this. We're going to just take a tiny lift as we come through here, get the car nice and straight before we're on the brakes, two shifts down, and then another shift down, a little squeeze in third gear, drop down to second, another little push on the accelerator, and then harden the power, try not to take the curve like I did there, and then across the line. So we're hitting a 155.6. So just looking over the setup, if you wanted to run a little bit more on the rear wing, uh, maybe two on the rear wing, you might find it a little bit easier to handle. But I do think uh, running a low downforce on the rear does have a really nice effect down the, down the finish straights. Enjoy it, guys. So here we go, stage two. And as we start the lap, we're gonna be full on the power. I'm going to be holding this power all the way through this first left-hander, right the way up into fifth gear. I'm just trying to hug the curve nice and tight as you come through the apex. 
keep it keep the foot down two drops down to third gear stay on the power as much as you can through that section and then dropping down into second gear just hugging it in full full lock on the on the steering wheel and then carrying the speed right the way up up into fifth gear as you come through this section tiny little lift here then back on the power don't keep your foot on the power take that little lift and then back on the power braking hard just there shift down shift down and then completely off the pedal on the brake pedal it just hugs it much tighter and then back up through the gears into fourth gear we're going to take a tiny drop down into third gear heavy on the brake pedal the car slides around a lot and then this is a really tricky one to stay on the power just just lifting and coasting just try and do as much as you can to carry as much speed through that corner as you can then we're going to be coming into another heavy braking section where we're trying to just let the car run in third gear and then get back on the power as soon as we can running as far wide as we can really out there and then you just flatten the power this is just the easiest section of the circuit now all the work's been done and you can just run the car nice and smoothly through this section just changing up at about 170 and then just uh, keeping your foot flat on that throttle pedal <clears throat> as we come through here we're just going to take a nice wide line just try and hug that left hand curb and let it run wide into the um, asphalt there and then uh, cross the line that's it So that's a lap. Stay tuned to the end of the video if you want to have a look over the setup and um, good luck with uh, setting a lap. So here we are, the final stage, stage three of the Norse life. Uh, loads of changes to be honest, through the gearbox, very little changes elsewhere on the car, a uh, tiny little bit of rear camber, but all the adjustments really come in throughout the gearbox and just trying to get the most out of each gear. So here we go, starting the lap. Don't be too greedy on the start and the entrance to this corner. Brake nice and early and don't go too late on the brake. Follow it nice and tight on the right hand corner and then up into that long second gear all the way up into third and braking really late down into second gear. Try and hug this centre section of the tarmac staying in that little line. That's where you'll find the best traction and then carrying it all the way up into fourth gear. We're going to take a tiny little drop down into third gear and just sort of half on the throttle through here. Try and keep some traction. And then again dropping down into second, that long second gear, hugging the corner nice and tightly. Then again up into third, up into fourth gear. We're going to stay in fourth gear through this section. And then again fourth gear through here and a tiny little drop down on the entrance. Hug that right hand curve and back on the power. And then carrying it through, just a little drop down into second gear, that long second gear. And then keeping it through and then as soon as you can up into third gear. Again dropping down into that long second gear which is primarily for this corner here so that you can stay in second right to the apex there come off the throttle a tiny bit the car goes light and up and over the curb again coming down into this next section all we're going to be doing is flat out in here into fourth gear a tiny little lift and then back on half throttle back to full power and carrying the speed through a little upshift into fifth gear as soon before we come over the ride there and then carrying flat out through this section Coming into what I consider to be quite a tricky section of the circuit. We're going to take a little drop down and then two drops down into third gear. It goes really all funny around here. And then again just another drop down into second gear. Horrible corner this one to try and carry the speed without losing the rear end. And again up into that long third gear. Just, just a little lift and then carrying back on the power through this section into fourth gear. And then all the work's done now. You can just settle down and just change gear as needed. God, that's a crazy section. Especially when you're going to be doing this flat out. And this being the final section of the circuit. It's going to be, uh, it's all or nothing, it really is. Hope you enjoyed the lap, guys. 
And that's that for stage three. So hopefully you've managed to take something away from this video. Apologies with how it's all sort of seemed to come together. It was uh, all part of the Facebook group really that brought this video together. So trying to put it all into one video seemed a bit weird. But I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, as always, ciao for now.